Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my dojo. This is where I'm at 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, uh, unless I'm at the office. This is the first how-to video. I think I'm going to make a lot more of these because it's easier to explain in person rather than in an email. Since we have the issue at Eagle Heights, what I want to do is show you guys how to test a coax cable run. Now, this is a patch cable, but it doesn't matter whether it's a patch cable or whether it's a drop in the wall. Process is still the same. What we want to determine is that the integrity of this cable can and will it send the signal across. Direct TV infrastructures require 75 ohms from point to point. That means everything from point to point and everything that's in line has to be at that specific ohm. It also has to be, uh, I think it was 2 to 2100 megahertz, or something like that. Uh, and the reason why is because DirecTV sends multiple signals down a single trunk cable from the satellite dish. They stack the signals inside one cable and they spread them across different frequencies. Each receiver has a frequency that's allocated by the switch. So when the signal is broadcasted, that receiver is only going to pick up the signal that's relating to the frequency that it is assigned and it will completely ignore everything else. <coughs> With that said, <coughs> um, everything that is a part of the cabling infrastructure from point to point has to be the same requirements or specs. Compression fittings, splitters, um, boosters, inline amps, well they're just going to juice you up. Uh, and, and the cable itself, the cable itself, this is RG6, uh, RG59, in theory would work, but it's thicker, it's rated at 50, so has to be RG6 and you can tell if it's RG6 versus RG59. RG6 is a lot thinner. It's a lot thinner. RG59 is a thicker cable. Um, back in the old days they used to call it thicket. Thicket cable. That was a huge monster cable that's about so big and they would run it across the ceilings and that's how they installed their network. DirecTV uses a, a topography that's very similar to bus I'm not sure if any of you guys paid attention back in Networking 101, but you've got Star, Mesh, Bus, all this other stuff. Bus is the one that will send the signal all across the pipe, and the signal has to terminate somewhere, somehow. Something has to terminate the signal, which is termination cap. So, in a DirecTV infrastructure, if you have a splitter and you have a couple of open ports, every port has to be terminated. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about that, or else you're going to experience all kinds of crazy problems. What those problems are, I don't know. I don't know if you're going to, there's going to be problems. So avoid all of that by making sure that each and every open port, if you got an eight port splitter and there's two not being used, you got to have a cap that's rated 75 ohms. Okay? So the compression fittings <clears throat> have to be rated 75 ohms. And you'll know when these compression fittings are rated at 75 because if you look on the inside, this cable, I'm not sure what they call it, dialect or something, but the little white filling on the inside that surrounds the copper core, if you see it inside the cap, that's 50. When you don't see it inside the cap like here, that's 75. Pretty simple and you have to use a compression fitting you cannot use those crimp on fittings even though you can get it on there and it's secure and tight it's just not rated to work on the specs required especially for direct TV so if you see the compre the, the co if you see the compression fitting you're good if you see the crimp on fitting you got to cut that sucker off and put another one on there <clears throat> so how do we test these cables pretty simple. Uh, you use your analog meter, digital meter if you want, and you test end to end. Make sure you have 75 ohms. Now if you have 
40 ohms, 30, 20, but you still have some ohms, then you know that there's a problem with the cable. It could be, there could be a short, a nick, um, probably with the jacket. It could be just about anything, but that is an issue that needs to be resolved because that will degrade the quality of the signal that's pushing through. Um, so keep that in mind. On every meter, there's an infinite symbol. Some crazy looking symbol that looks like it should be in, it's kind of like a horseshoe with two little legs sticking out like that. That's the infinite symbol. If that needle's on that infinite symbol, when you're testing, that means there's an open circuit. Basically, what that means is somewhere there's a chop in it and it's completely separated and that signal is not getting past it. If that happens, if you have a, a tester, might be able to tell you how far down the line it is. You can patch these, but if you're going to patch these, remember you got to use the splitters that are rated. Even these little buggers here. You get the good quality ones, you don't have any problems. You get the cheapy ones from China, you might have problems. So if there was a cut here, I would just, and if I could see the cut, to repair it, cut it, two compression fittings, and your connector. You want to limit the amount of inline connections to any cable run because the more inline connections you have, the, the more room for issues. <clears throat> so how do you test these? Well, this is how you do it. First thing you're going to need is a compression, I mean, a termination cap. Pretty simple. Cap has a solid top. On the inside, looks just like a regular end of a patch cable, coax patch cable, okay? But before you even begin, two things you want to make sure of. Are you terminating, are you testing the right cable? And of course, if you're on infinite, you either are not testing the right cable or the cable you're testing is damaged. That's why you want to make sure that you're testing the right cable. So you can tone these out as well. The second thing you want to do is to make sure that your termination cap is rated at 75. Could be 50. This one needs to be 75. Because if it's 50, it's not going to work. How do we do that? Pretty simple. Here's my multimeter. I have the old school analog one because I'm old school. What I want to do is switch it to ohms, RX1, RX10, or RX100. So which one do you use? It's pretty simple. doesn't matter. But whichever one you do use, whatever reading you get up here on the top, multiply it by 10, that will give you your ohms. I do 10 because it's a lot easier for me. So I'm going to set it to 10. And since I'm using an analog one, what you have to do is these here, you actually have to adjust the ohms before you use it. If you, if you use 100, if you do 10 now, then you say you want to do 100, you've got to adjust it all over again. So how do you adjust it? Well, I short out the multimeter by touching my probes together. Saw that needle jump. That needle needs to be hitting zero. So we got to term uh, we have to adjust it there's a little knob here on the side as I move it you see it moving so what I'm gonna do is I want to make sure it is dead on zero dead on zero all right second thing I want to do is test the cap now how do I test this cap pretty simple your black probe touch the outside make sure you actually touch metal that's a little label that's going across Touch metal. The red touched the copper core. Watch my watch my needle here. Oh, so hard to do this right here. Make sure this bad boy's good. All right, let me try one more time. Hold on, guys. I promise I'll get it. There we go. It. Oops. Right, 7.5 right there so times 10 75 so I know this is good to go all right next thing I want to do 
Now, it doesn't matter which side you're going to test on. You just got to terminate one side and go to the other side and then test with your multimeter. So let's just act like this side is the wall side. All right. <clears throat> so if it's the wall side, you'll have a jack. Just pop it on there. But since I don't have a jack on here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw on my compression fitting. And then I'm going to pop my cap on. Okay. So wall opposite side. But before I do, I want to show you what happens when we don't have a cap on. What do you think is going to happen? Absolutely nothing. Oops. Watch my multimeter. Touching the copper core. Absolutely nothing. That's because the signal is not terminating. Now if I pop my cap on. Oh. Alright, so I pop my cap back on. Now, black to the outside of the compression fitting, red to the copper core. Watch this bad boy. Okay. 7.5 times 10, 75 ohms. Complete cable without issues. Anything less than 75, there's an issue. If you don't get anything at all, one of two things. You're not testing the right cable or the cable's damaged. Now, the big question is if it is damaged, can you tone it? Probably not because it's broke. That's why one of these will come in handy because it's going to read just like a data cable tell you how far down that signal gets this will tell you. If it's labeled on both ends that's half the battle then you know you're testing the right cable and if you come back infinite on your multimeter you know the cable's bad and you gotta replace it. Simple. Now remember, 150 feet, you're good to go. And again, it all depends on what you're transmitting over the cable. If it's high def, if it's direct TV, it's Comcast, you've got DVRs on the end, all that plays an important part in determining the infrastructure. But it's pretty simple. Um, the same way a data network has to accommodate the speed of what you want is the same thing with the coax. So that is the conclusion of this tutorial. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. If I have the answer, I'll let you have it. And if I don't, I'll find it. All right. Signing off, guys.